Hey, how's everyone doing today? This is Josh Noel with Premium B, and in this After Effects tutorial, we're going to create HUD elements and composite it onto a display. So here we are inside of After Effects, and we're going to focus on designing this HUD uh, UI. And we'll be focusing on this targeting system here, which will give you a great insight on how to design HUD elements. So if you're working on a project that requires a lot of HUD elements, you should be able to take away a lot of the concepts from this tutorial to create whatever you're looking to do. But if you don't have a lot of time to sit down and work on these graphics, what I suggest doing is to check out the interface HUD element pack from rocketstock.com. There's over 400 elements right inside this pack and very easy to go. You just drag and drop it and we'll be go ahead and explore some of those uh, HUD elements. And we're also going to give out the free elements with this project that you see here as well. So uh, you should have at least something to start with. And then if you need to expand on it, go ahead and check out the interface pack if you need to save some time. So let's go get started. Let's create a new composition and we can call this one tutorial main. I'm using 1920 by 1080, 23 frames per second. And the duration, that's really up to you. I'm going to keep mine at 10 seconds. So we're primarily going to be focusing on this and the one thing to keep in mind if you're looking to create a HUD element is that this entire thing is built upon shapes. So we just have to be able to break down what we're looking to do and be able to use the shape tools inside of After Effects to create what we want to do. So let's take a look here. So we have this crosshair which is all made out of rectangles, right? So we can get started over here. We can grab the rectangle tool and we can just draw out a rectangle like this, like a thin rectangle. We can set the uh, fill to a white color, click OK, and we click the word stroke and we can set this to none. And if we want to align this in the middle of our composition, go to the Align tab and just center it up. And if you don't see the Align tab, go up to Window, Align. And now we go to our Shape Layer 1 here, go to Rectangle 1, go up to Edit, Duplicate, and remember the shortcut because we'll be doing this a lot. And we'll duplicate this layer and we go into the rectangle to go to the transform rectangle to and we can set the rotation to 90 degrees. And now we have like a crosshair here. Now if we want to create each of the like indicators in here, it's very easy to do that. All we have to do is now grab another rectangle tool here and we can just draw out a very thin rectangle point like so and go to the align tab and make sure that's centered within our composition. So now you might be thinking, okay, well we have to duplicate this a thousand times to uh, stretch out the entire length of the uh, rectangle here, right? We don't have to do that. So what we're going to do is go to our shape layer here, go to add, and we're going to add a repeater. And we're going to open up repeater one. We're going to transform repeater one. We're going to set the position X to zero. And we're going to increase the position Y up in the negative value here. And now we have this duplicated and you see we increase the number of copies to go all the way across. I'm only going to do four copies here because now the next one I want to make a little bit bigger. So from here, what we're going to do is we're going to put repeater one into the rectangle one here and then I'm going to get another rectangle here and I'm going to make this one a little bit more thick and a little bit bigger so we know it's like you know in multiples of five and we just have to nicely position this okay looking good so we have our multiple of five and what I want to do here is go to add and I want to add a group and we'll put both these rectangles into group one and we're going to go to add and we're going to add another repeater and we'll go to repeater one here, go back to transform repeater one, set the position X to zero, increase the position Y once again. And now we have this nice group here and now we can complete the overall design and we'll go ahead and increase the number of copies to the top. So I'm gonna go ahead and grab the pan behind tool which is here at the top and I'm gonna grab the anchor point on our lines layer and I'm gonna make sure this is in the center of our composition and bring up the uh, crosshairs in the middle or so the title saves Go ahead and click on the title action space by clicking on the uh, crosshair grid button down here. And what we can do here is now duplicate the lines layer. We can hit R on our keyboard for rotation and we can rotate this by 90 degrees. And that's looking good. And we'll go ahead and duplicate both of these, bring them to the top, and we can continue to rotate these by 90 degrees as well. Now we might have to readjust the actual you know, crosshair lines here to make it you know, matched up correctly. So we can easily go in there and just expand the sizes of the rectangles just so we can reach across all the way. All right, and just like that, we've just been able to easily create a crosshair, and of course you can go in here and animate it if you wanna do that, but since we are already creating an element that should be up on the screen, uh, we're not gonna animate the crosshair. So I wanna create like a circle pulse animation, if you will, from the center of our crosshair here. So what I'm gonna do here is, first of all, I'm gonna recolor code these so we can kind of you know, keep everything separated. So this is like the meat of the crosshair. 
And now we can grab the ellipse tool and we'll draw out a perfect circle from the center here. You're gonna hold down shift and command on a Mac or shift and control on a PC to draw out a perfect circle and from the center. And uh, here we are, we're gonna go ahead and turn off the, uh, the fill, go to the stroke and we'll turn that back on. And I'll just copy that X, cool. And now we have our circle here and we can increase the pixel count by a little bit at the top here so we can see this a little bit better. And that's looking good, so what we can do here is we can hit S on a keyboard for scale. We can add a keyframe for this. We can move it forward in time. So let's have it set by maybe like, you know, maybe two seconds almost, one and a half ish. And we'll go make sure we begin the timeline and set the scale down to zero percent. So now we have this nice circle animation here. And we can of course scale it up even more if we want. And we make the last keyframe an easy ease keyframe by hitting F9 on our keyboard. And we'll make the first one an easy ease keyframe as well. And now what we need to do is kind of animate this off, right? So let's go into the shape layer one here. Let's go into the contents, go to the ellipse, go to the stroke one. And towards the end of this animation, let's uh, add a keyframe for stroke width. Go to the last keyframe for our scale. And let's set the stroke width down to zero. So now they'll kind of just fade away like that. And we can make the last keyframe here an easy ease keyframe by hitting F9 on our keyboard. And now we have this nice pulse animation here. And I'll just call this one pulse. But from here, we're just going to go ahead and duplicate this layer. And we can offset it in time. And we can do it again. So we can kind of have like, you know, multiple pulses. And, you know, that's cool. So let's go ahead and continue to build this HUD graphic out even more. So I want to go ahead and create like a nice little base around our uh, crosshair here. So I'm going to grab like the pen tool here and make sure the stroke is the only one that's enabled. And we'll draw out a you know point like this at the top. Hold down shift. We're gonna kind of create this nice little arc here. And make sure to hold down shift the entire time here so you have these perfect lines. And we might need to make a few adjustments for the vertices. So go ahead and just select those individually and uh, you know get them in the right spot. And that should be cool. And now we have this you know crosshair here. And then of course I'm gonna go grab the rectangle tool and I want to draw out like a a thicker area here like this so and we're gonna turn on the word fill click the word fill and turn it on I'm gonna go ahead and grab this stroke color click OK and I'm gonna turn off stroke and we'll make sure this is centered up and if we need to make any changes to the size go into the rectangle path one and you can break the chain here and you can always uh, mess with the scaling of this a little bit boom there you have it looks good and now we have our two shape layers over here I'll go ahead and change the color coding of this and I want to go ahead and duplicate these layers, bring them to the top. And I want to go up to layer, transform, flip, horizontal. Now they'll be on the other side. So just a little bit more of a, you know, an indicated square here so we can kind of see what's in this element. And let's say we want to actually create like a grid across this, right? So like in the original one, we have like this nice grid here. So let's go in here and let's create that grid. So let's go to the ellipse tool. And we can draw out a very small uh, circle. So hold down shift and we can come over here. And I'm going to go ahead and make this a much dark, uh, darker blue color here. I guess there we are. That's good. And from here, I'm going to go to add and I'm going to add the repeater again. And the repeater tool is such a time saver. Absolutely is. And from here, we can... And from here, we can decrease the position X to kind of keep this nice and small, like so, maybe a little bit bigger than that. And we go to the number of copies, and we can increase this like crazy. And I'm actually going to go ahead and make the ellipse a little bit smaller. So I'm going to bring down the size to like four, just so it's a little bit better like than that. And once again, to finish this off, let's go ahead and create a group. And let's put the ellipse and repeater one into the group. And then let's add another repeater. And make sure that that's outside of the group. Go to the repeater. Go to transform repeater to decrease the X position to zero. Increase the Y by a touch. And then we can increase the number of copies. And now that's looking really good. Let's go ahead and rename this layer to, I don't know, dots. And let's put this layer underneath everything in our uh, timeline here. And so far looking good. And now let's say we want to create like an animated text, right? So what we can do here is maybe create like a quick, you know, rectangle, create like a text box, if you will. And I'll just draw that rectangle like so, turn off the fill, 
We'll turn on the stroke. We'll bring the stroke count down to maybe like four or so. And then we can type out our text. We can grab the textile tool and we'll just draw out a thick box like this. And you might want to put something important here, but I'm just going to, for time's sake, I'm just going to hit the, my keyboard and just spell out something. And then, of course, I can copy all this and paste it in there. So, of course, it's really small. I mean, no one's ever going to, like, read what exactly is in this box. So it might not even matter. You might want to, like I said, depending on what you're doing, you might want to say something intelligent. If not, then, you know, this could just be some random code, if you will. So from here... Let's say we want to animate this a little bit, kind of have like some movement. Let's go into the text layer here. Let's go to the animate tab and let's add the character offset parameter. And from here, you can increase the character offset. And let me zoom in here by a touch. You can see what's happening. So by increasing the character offset, the uh, letters change and it's really small. So it's kind of hard to see it. But what we're going to do here is we're going to go to the range selector and we're going to go to the beginning of our timeline and we're going to add a keyframe for offset. And then we're going to move forward in time to the end of our animation, which I'll just say like six seconds. And we're going to increase the offset. And now there'll be a little bit of random animation through everything here. So this is a way to nicely animate uh, some text that will be changing. And for the most part, you know, we can continue to work on this HUD element, you know, for the next few hours if we really wanted to. We can really add on to this or we can create another element. But for the most part, you should be able to break down shapes and create what you're looking to do. Now, uh, for those of us who are in the time crunch and we have all these other elements that we're giving in this project file to put together, let's go ahead and let's build out a more extensive HUD and let's go ahead and composite it onto a screen. So from here, let's go ahead and grab all of our layers. Let's pre-compose it and we can call this one HUD element uh, one or two, I'll say two in my case, click OK. And now we have our HUD element all by itself. And we can come here, scale it down and find a nice spot for this on our screen. If, so if you download the project files, you're going to get these HUD elements all for free here that are in the interface uh, video pack. So we can bring in this nice graph here, drop this in and we go to the beginning here. You see we have this very nice graph that's already pre-animated for us and we can put this nicely, you know, put it in a nice spot, scale it down. And there's even a little bit of animation to it, right? So that's really cool, right? And within the matter of a minute, we've been able to drag these HUD elements in here and make this look like a very important screen of some sort, right? And we can, of course, you know, we have like these loops here, which will be uh, you know, completely loopable. And basically, if you need to stretch it out over 10 seconds, you can go ahead and duplicate the layers and just place them right on top of each other, building a nice staircase. And if we want to, we can add like a background image in here. I have this uh, world image at night that I think would be pretty interesting. Of course, we, we would lower the opacity on this so we can kind of, you know, at least see the HUD elements a little bit better. So maybe around that percentage and we can scale this down. And now it kind of looks like a you know, more of a HUD element display of the world map. You know, this background image might be optional. You know, you might just want to have, have a little bit more detail into your display, which we're going to go ahead and composite right now. So let's come here. Let's go ahead and pre-compose everything by going to layer, pre-compose, and let's call this one HUD display one. Great. And then let's bring in our video layer. And this is just a quick you know, shot I took of my TV here, which it really doesn't matter. As you can see, we have a lot of reflections in here and clearly it doesn't really matter because we're gonna cover this up and that's the beauty of compositing. So let's go ahead and turn on our HUD display here. And what we need to do is first of all, scale this down by a touch. So we're gonna go up to effect, distort, and we're gonna grab the corner pin effect. And from here, you get four little crosshairs and you can add these to each of the, its respective corners. So we'll come here at that corner there, go to lower left. And this way it will be easily composited onto the TV. As you can see, this is composited on the TV, but we still have all these reflections, which can be a good thing uh, depending on you know, the reflections of the actual room, but you can see the light, you can see the camera. So what we can do is go back into this HUD display, go up to layer, new, solid, and we can create a nice black background and click OK. And make sure there's layers underneath everything. And if we go back to our main comp, that reflection is completely gone. 
Now, I want to go ahead and make these elements a little bit more lively. So let's go up to Effect, Stylize, Glow. And we can go ahead and increase the glow threshold just by a little bit. And maybe increase the glow, glow radius. And a little bit before and after, we have, kind of have a nice glow onto this. And that might be a little too strong. And after a quick before and after, you know, the glow definitely has this impact onto this image. And just like that, you have this nice... Uh, you know, HUD display, and of course your shots are going to always vary depending on what you're shooting, but with the corner pin effect, so you should have no problem compositing your HUD display onto your TV or monitor or whatever you're shooting. And before we render this out, let's go back to our original comp and turn on motion blur for this layer and make sure to turn it on for any other layer that you have animated and you should be able to render it out. And after a quick render, this is what we have. And you can see we have all these nice HUD elements inside of this display. So hope you guys enjoyed this video. For more tutorials, please be sure to check out our blog at premiumbeat.com. And if you're in the need for royalty-free music, we have a huge library full of great music for your projects. So if you have the time, I invite you to check us out at premiumbeat.com. And once again, thank you for watching this video. And this has been Joshua Noel from premiumbeat.com.